Jurassic World Dominion is the newest chapter in the Jurassic World saga thing. How does it stack up though? Well, let me just say this. If you like Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, you're much easier to please than I am. So I went into Jurassic World 3 with very low expectations. Did it even meet those? I'm gonna tell you about it right now. If you enjoyed the trip down memory lane that was Jurassic World, oh, you're gonna love this. Not only is this chock full of references to that first Jurassic Park film, it also brings back all the characters, including guys you didn't even think mattered. Remember Lewis Dodgson? I didn't. He's in Jurassic Park 1. I mean, I think he's played by a different character to be fair, but he's the guy that gives Nedry the canister to steal the dinosaur DNA. But now he's basically Tim Cook from Apple. He, he's a big power player. He's, he's looking to corner the market in terms of food supply. How's he gonna do this? I think it's pretty obvious. He's gonna create giant locusts that are gonna become a plague on the farmer's crops, thereby destroying them and allowing his company, Iogen or something, it doesn't matter, to become the sole distributor of food in the world. It's a perfect plan. I can't possibly see what could go wrong, except for everything. That's right, in Jurassic World 3, dinosaurs are so yesterday. Now it's all about those giant locusts. Sure, there's a good amount of dinosaurs in here, especially in the second half of the film, but the first hour or so is really about jumping from place to place, meeting characters both old and new, and have very little idea or care about what's happening. If you're like myself and thought Jurassic Turd Fallen Franchise was one of the worst things ever, uh, you're out of luck because they went all in on the plots. Uh, the clone girl that released some of the dinosaurs into the wild, she's back. She's uh, plot A. Owen and Claire have taken her under their wing, held up in a log cabin where he continuously works on his motorcycle. Just get a new one! How many times are you going to work on this damn thing, Owen? It's a lemon. They can't risk having her wander out on her own because there's a team of poachers after her to bring her to the evil corporation that wants to, to figure out what's going on with her DNA or something. I don't care at all about what's happening in this film. I'm gonna be honest with you. The reason Jurassic Park and to a lesser extent some of the later ones worked is because it was simple. A dinosaur park gets overrun with dinos. Humans have to survive. Jaws, a story about a shark eating people has to be killed. These are not complex plots. That's what makes them good. You can experience this fear and dread through one or two lead characters. That's completely gone. No longer is Jurassic Park a horror thriller, sci-fi sort of thing. It's just a straight up action film now, but the action's not very good. And the plots, there are several, are so mind-numbingly stupid, you just can't wait for it to end. Or at least that's where I was. I just wanted to see dinosaurs eat people. Is this so hard to do? It's been a great year for cinema. So it sucked going back into these theaters and just witnessing some of the worst shit ever. It doesn't help that this theatrical experience was just a treasure. I'll get to that at the end of this review. Stick around, those are always fun when I review the theater experience. We've been going Star Wars with this whole property. First with Jurassic World 1 being a soft reboot, a la A Force Awakens New Hope. Then we have the second one that's garbage and ruins all the good credit the first one had. And now with this third outing, we make the worst one possible. Now, to Jurassic World 3's credit, unlike Rise of Skywalker, they didn't throw out the previous script. They actually chose to go forward with these bad ideas for the third outing. Now, while they're terrible, at least they decided to pick a lane and stick in it. And much like Star Wars, we got that original cast back again, wearing the trademark hat, slowly removing shades, saying those catchphrases from old, showing some chest hair only to have it made fun of. I mean, you name it, they did it. Including repeating almost beat for beat the same plot in the final act of the film. Isn't that fun? Aren't we, aren't we loving that still? Now, if you are genuinely excited to see Sattler, Grant, and Malcolm back together again, the original trio, and, and have them intermingle with the new cast, that happens, and there's a decent amount of screen time for everyone. They all, they all share an equal weight here. Uh, it, it's just too bad that they're regurgitating the same stuff we saw with far less impact. The movie is long as shit, too. It's two and a half hours. What are they doing? 
Why is this so long? Have they just focused on one centralized plot? Which would be, I don't know, dinosaurs terrorizing the world? We would have had a nice hour 45, two hour movie. I just don't know why some of these screenwriters keep thinking more is more, when it's almost never the case. Less is more, you fools. It wouldn't be Jurassic World without some new dinosaurs, and we have some. A few are closer to what scientists believe is how they looked. They got the feathers, they're a little shorter. I'm not sure how these creatures evolved in this short of a time, or if they were bred that way. It was probably mentioned in a throwaway line, and I just completely missed it because my eyes were glazed over about 15 minutes into this film. And there's this big-ass dinosaur with some long fingernails. That was my favorite. Just a, just a total Karen running amok. Just like, uh, I don't, I don't want it, dear. Uh. <laughs> Visually speaking, it did look like there was a decent amount of animatronic dinosaurs in this one. Some of it felt very real. Most of it didn't. Uh, cartoonish almost at times. Especially Blue. I feel like Blue and his little baby Blue... Uh, they took a step backwards in the CG department. They, they just aren't even trying half the time here. I just wanted this to be done. And that's really sad to say about a film, you know, where, where dinosaurs are eating people. The new character Watts is far and away better than the complete character that Owen has become. Remember how he trains raptors like they're dogs by just holding out his hand? He, he's the dinosaur whisper. He just gives his smolder. 90% of this movie is just Owen looking stern. Actually, that might be 90% of Chris Pratt in general now. Anyway, his talk to the hand ability is beyond parody at this point. Not only does he use it on Blue, but everything he sees, dinosaurs, cars, people, you name it, he's got that hand out. He's like, well, we got three dinosaurs here. We got three dinosaurs here. Stop. Hey, stop. I got a force field around me. Where am I at? Where, where am I at? I'm out of your mouth. That's where I'm at. You do not move. You do not move. Hey. Hey. No. No. And there's always plot armor in these movies for the main characters. I accept that. Here, though, they're not even trying. There's a scene where there's a dinosaur fight club going on. Owen's just walking around while all these dinosaurs are released. There's guys getting eaten, and Owen's just standing there a foot away, like, whoa, we better, <laughs> better get out of here. See you later. Dinosaur's right here. He doesn't even flinch at it anymore. They're like pets to him. Owen, look out. Oh, I got this. I got this. Double hand up. Double hand. They don't know where I'm at. They don't know where I'm at. They only see the hands. They only... Sometimes this works, too. It also wouldn't be a Jurassic Park film without something so cringe you get secondhand cringe from it, and, and it happens here. Not quite gymnast out the window, not quite uh, Alan dinosaur talking, but it's it's damn close. And that's clone girl doing the Owen hand thing to a raptor later on. Owen's like, oh, there's, there's too many for my hands. I didn't think it was possible. And then the girl is like, hey, you shall not pass. Even Dr. Grant is taken aback. He's like, oh, what? What is this ability I never thought to use before? Wow, she seems to have an invisible touch. Overall impressions of this, at two and a half hours long, yes, there are moments that shine. There are a few spots of greatness here where I'm thinking, oh wow, this is cool. A, a dinosaur's, you know, skulking after Claire and she's going into the swamp. That part was pretty well shot, looked beautiful when they do that kind of underwater, out of water sequence. There's some good stuff here, but the overall package is miserable. I cannot believe how dumb these are getting. And I understand there are movies about dinosaurs running amok and, and, and killing people, fine. That doesn't mean you have to take me completely out of it. I want to be engaged. I want to be lost in this Jurassic world. Not just sitting here thinking that at any moment, Vin Diesel and crew could show up in their muscle cars and say, get in. They're both owned by Universal. I would not be surprised if we see Jurassic World Tokyo Drift or Fast and the Furious 20 Jungle Cruise. Like, it's all possible. It's all possible. Maybe the cars are even Transformers because I think, is that also Universal? Oh my God, could you imagine? Fast and the Furious meets Transformers meets Jurassic Park. We're at the point where I'm for it. 
That's how dumb things have gotten. Took my 13 year old, my 10 year old, and my wife, who has now vowed to never go to the movies again. Not because this movie was so bad, but because of the theatrical experience, which I have to share with you right now briefly. We went to a Thursday showing at five o'clock in 3D. So the prices are about as expensive as they can possibly get. We go on a Thursday night where a lot of people still don't know the movie's out. Figured I would eliminate a lot of children since it costs like 60 freaking dollars just to get in with the family. But lo and behold, just like the dinosaurs, assholes find a way. For the first 10 or so minutes, people are still trickling in and, and now it's just acceptable to use your phone at max brightness or with the flashlight on to find your seats. Somehow, People were able to do this for centuries before the invention of the smartphone. But now, now lo and behold, we have the answer to everything. Keep that sucker out. Make sure you know exactly where you're going. Wouldn't want you to slip or trip and fall on your fucking face and break your nose. Wouldn't, wouldn't want that while I'm watching the film and you distract me with your lights. Talking loudly. Trying to find your inbred cousin Chip who saved the entire row for you and your crew. I'm almost at the point where I'm numb to people being on their phones. I've just accepted it. I've lost that fight long ago. So the, the constant distractions all around, the lights, the noises. I, I'm pretty good at blocking it now, which is really depressing to say. I shouldn't have to have an extra layer of filtration to block everyone around. I thought no matter what walk of life we are, where we fell on the political spectrum, where we fell on anything, we could at least come together in a safe space theater and become one. A cohesive unit watching a film together, but nope, we gotta be on our phones, we gotta be chatting, we gotta be rude. And, and, and that's just how it is now. So my wife, who doesn't go to a lot of movies because I'm kind of obnoxious to be around because I get frustrated by these people, she was furious the entire film. I stayed silent. She couldn't stop commenting. And it was specifically for one key thing. We were watching a movie about dinosaurs, but directly in front of me was a gigantic beast who was vaping the entire movie. She was a big gal too. So when she shifted around to get her device ready, you knew it. Oh, and also when the, the puffs of smoke trailed and I could smell the cherry banaca or whatever flavor it was, yeah, that, that was pretty telling as well. To add insult to injury, she also had a child with right next to her who, who got to also experience the pleasure of secondhand vape. So I'm trying to kind of watch the movie, block out the smoke particles, block out the phones, and block out my wife who is just pissed. She's like, I don't want to smell this crap. Why is she allowed to do this? I'm like, yeah, people are allowed to do anything now in theaters. There's, there's no limit. People are allowed to do everything anywhere. There, there's no rules. It's chaos. It's anarchy. Uh, she eventually got up to tell one of the staff people, in which point I just kind of chuckled to myself. Like, <laughs> they're not going to do anything. They don't care. They're making like a minimum wage here. Eventually, and I knew this was a lost cause going in because unlike good people, I do judge a book by its cover. And I knew this bitch wasn't going to listen to me. But I leaned forward anyways for my wife's well-being and I said, Hey, you need to not vape in here. Okay? She doesn't say anything. She just looks at me stone cold like a dumbass. I say, Yeah, I know. It's tough. Life is hard. But we don't want to smell your vape. And this was actually verbatim. Usually I'm over the top. But I was actually livid. Because it wasn't bothering me as much as it was bothering my wife. And I'm going to stand up for her. And, and yeah, I guess my kids too, whatever, whatever, they're here too. Woman says nothing. And then she makes it for an impressive 20 minutes before the cravings start to kick in again. And she leans forward this time and starts puffing like a goddamn chimney away from us. Yeah, that, that, that fixes things. Now we can't smell it. Now we can't see it. Now we can't hear it. Perfect. Flawless victory. So just like every other bad theater experience, she wins. She gets away with cold-blooded murder, basically. Uh, I, I can't say anything else. She's not going to listen. Managers aren't going to come in here. They don't care. The only thing left to do is for me to gather about uh, 12 different straws from cups around the theater. And then... <laughs> stick them into every fat roll of her body. And yeah, 12's not enough straws. This is a big woman. I then gather up all the vape pens I can find. Pop those into the straws. Much like Aunt Marge from Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, this bitch blows up four times her size. Buttons popping off. Ping, ping, ping. One of the buttons hits her son in the head. Yeah, mommy. Another button flies way up to a guy's phone. King, 
reflects off, goes through his eye. <laughs> she starts to take flight like the house and up. About the same size, too. When she's almost clear to the ceiling, I grab her son, flip him like a javelin, and chuck his ass. And much like The Last Jedi, this kid <laughs> slices right through her body like it's a dreadnought. Her carcass explodes, filling the auditorium with blood and guts and pus and shit. As the debris washes over the theater, my kids look up and slowly remove their 3D glasses like they're looking at the first dinosaurs they've ever seen in real life and get up slowly. I grab the top of my wife's head, turn it, she gets up too. And that's when I say goodbye, Jurassic Park. It's been a good run but you are long overdue to be put down. Well, there you go, my Jurassic World experience from both an audience perspective and the film itself. Let me know in the comments if you have something to say about either one of these. The movie itself or the crowd you had the displeasure of watching with. Maybe you're like my wife and you said screw it to theaters a long time ago. It's not worth the hassle. And I would totally sympathize because to me, the magic is all but dead. Thank you for listening to me rant. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't and like the video. I would appreciate you sticking around for more. I put in a lot of work and it's nice to be rewarded once in a while. There's also a notification bell somewhere you can hit and then these videos show up right in your feed. It makes, it makes tracking me down a hell of a lot easier. I'll tell you that much. Okay, goodbye. There's a scene in this film where Owen survives a plane crash as it slams into thick ice head first. He gets out, he's fine. They're in the middle of a frozen tundra. They don't seem to be cold. Um, they're soaking wet as well, I think. And they just kind of just go on with their day. In an older film, like in, in like the original Jurassic Park, this would be a deal. This would be a 30 minute sequence. In this movie, it's like three minutes and done. It's just so much nonsense happens. And there's just no consequences or reaction to really any of it because it's all in front of a green screen now. Nothing matters. There's so much plot armor on these characters, I can't take any of it even remotely serious. 